Welcome to another edition of the Basketball Teacher Podcast. Our mission is to bring you discussions on a wide array of topics in the coaching world to grow players on and off the court. You can connect with us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and also reach us directly through email at basketballteacherpodcast at gmail.com. Now, here's your host, Coach Mike Hernandez. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining us here for another episode, wherever in the world you're listening to us from, whatever platform you're listening to us on. uh, Thank you guys so much for listening, sharing this podcast with those, you know, who might be interested in it and continuing the journey as we are on year three of the show. Uh, As I mentioned with my guest right before I started recording, uh, a lot of the previous guests who I've talked to and I've even have a whole episode dedicated to it are, are talk about parent interactions and talk about for lack of a better term, dealing with parents and and how to handle those conversations, especially with sometimes some more uh, tough parents, so to speak. But we get into a lot of conversations that end up talking about parents because obviously they're they're, they're super vital, they're super important. And and to have a great basketball team and great basketball players, parents, coaches, players, they all got to be on the same page. But because of that, I really wanted to take some time specifically to talk to a basketball dad to somebody who is raising a basketball player and, and, and get their perspective and, and help us as coaches learn a little bit or just see things from a different perspective. I know some coaches uh, don't have kids of their own and, and this might be a little bit of uh, insight for you. And I think it's just a good conversation just to bring the perspective of, of not only for a coach to hear from somebody who's raising a basketball player, but also uh, for those of you who are listening who, who might be raising a basketball player or uh, might be just raising any son or daughter who might be playing a sport in general. So we're going to kind of take this in both both angles. So I'm really, really excited uh, to get in, into that with you. So my guest today uh, is uh, uh, describes himself as a basketball dad and coach and also a business owner, a very business, busy man. So I'm very happy that he's able to join us. Uh, coach Steve Nichols is here to join us today. Coach, how are we doing? We're doing good. How about you? I'm doing quite well. As we talked about, we're in the summer, a little hot in Phoenix, a little little muggy out there in West Virginia, but but we're making do and keeping busy. Um, That's right. Let's go ahead and kind of get started, Coach, kind of kind of with your uh, journey. So uh, usually with this with this question, it kind of goes into into the coaching journey. So I do want to kind of talk about that with you, but. As you also talk about your coaching journey, I'm also curious about the journey that you've kind of gone with uh, raising a basketball player and whether or not basketball was something that, that, that was always uh, in, in the cards or, or how that journey came about to uh, where um, you are currently raising a basketball player. So kind of if you can tell us the coaching journey and also kind of the, the parenting journey involved from the basketball side, that would be great. Sure. Um, you know, I, I played basketball all my life, uh, had an opportunity to um, play at the collegiate level, and I chose not to because I was burnt out. Um, and, you know, I played basketball, baseball, so, uh, uh, football. And when I got to college, I had a opportunity, the coach come to me and, and asked me to walk on and and I thought about it, and, and I just chose not to because I just burn out. I just mm-hmm. burn out. So I chose not to. Now I look back and I regret that. But uh, um, I've got a uh, daughter that's going to be a junior in high school this year. And um, I, was, I loved sports all my life. Loved watching them, loved playing them all, excelled at all of them. And um, uh, my daughter... When she got old enough, we started playing softball, and I coached her at that. And uh, and she started playing basketball in third grade, and I started coaching coaching that. <laughs> and then um, I coached her from third grade to eighth grade. And then uh, when she got to high school, then I became a basketball dad. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know. As a coach, you know, you, you coach your daughter, but you're also coaching the whole team. So you're sure. really not concentrating, uh, putting every minute into just your daughter because I'm a, I'm a very competitive person and I like to win. And um, so, uh, you know, I, I was coaching the whole team, just not my daughter. Sure. And as a, as a basketball dad, 
uh, I spend every minute working with my daughter. Right. So, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a change and it's an adjustment, you know, when you go, uh, to a game and you sit in the bleachers as a dad and watch, and you're watching a little bit different than a dad because, because I've coached all my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking at different things and evaluating a little bit different. A lot of parents do, but, um, I do coach my daughter and her high school team in the off season. Um, to help out our high school coach. So uh, I love doing that. Um, but juggling a, a business and um, working out with my daughter every evening, but one day <laughs> we, get, we, we get one day off. Um, so my whole life is, is nothing but basketball. And if we're not training, we're, we're watching basketball. Um, the whole family is just ate up with basketball. So we love it. Yeah, I, I, and I have to ask, because you, you, you segue right into a question I was going to ask you, just, just about how you manage uh, the, just the, the, the coaching aspect that I, that I know you're, you mentioned that you're involved in, being a basketball dad, also just being a family man in general, and, and being a business owner. Like, how does one effectively kind of manage your time to, to be successful and be productive at, at all these different avenues? Well, you know, I was, I was in the military for seven years. I was in the Army National Guard for seven years. Mm. And uh, growing up, my dad, my dad was a command sergeant major in the Army. So um, at a very young age, I, I, was, I, I was taught how to be organized. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, uh, I lived a military life in my house before I went to the military. <laughs> so it wasn't that big of a change. But, you know, when you're in the military, you just, they teach you to be organized, you know, and manage your time and, and manage every aspect of your life, you know, and become disciplined with that. Um, then I've, I've taught my daughter this, the same way. So, so you know, we're, we're very organized with our time. I go to work at uh, seven o'clock in the morning usually get home at four and especially during the off season here where my daughter's out of school we uh, I get home um, she's already worked out in the weight room and it's time to go train basketball so we we know we're going to do that for at least two hours and then uh, come back get something to eat and then talk about what we did that evening so that's that's basically six days a week and, and we take one day off so um but it's not bad i've i've been in business for over 30 years so uh, uh my staff is is trained well and, and can handle a lot of things without me being there um it took that long to get to that point but mm -hmm. it, it came at a good time where i don't have to be there every hour of the day and i can i get to spend a lot of time with my daughter and so from, from the sounds of it, and, and I'm not surprised to hear you say that at all, that, that, that organization and, and, and the discipline to stay, stay that level of organized is the key to that level of success at all those endeavors. Yes, absolutely. And, and you know, I tell my daughter, I was like, you know, if, if you're going to be, be good at anything, you've got to be organized and, and you've got to be disciplined. Um, I see a lot of kids, they, they want, they want it. They want to be the best or, or they want to go to the next level, but you know, I don't, I don't see the work getting put in, you know, and that's, you've, you've got to put in the work and you've got to be disciplined. And <clears throat> a lot of times my daughter will during season, will get up and we'll go down to the gym at five 30 and, and work out. Then I'll go in the work and she'll go to class. So, you know, does she want to get up at five thirty every morning? No. Do I want to get up at five thirty? No. But we do it. You know, that's what it takes. So, you know, we get up two or three times a week at five thirty and go work out. And then at the end of the day, she's like, "Man, I'm glad I did that, Dad." I said, "Absolutely." <laughs> <laughs> and and it's it's that it's I think was something about that um, that that's really interesting. Uh, you know, to me in particular, when when you are maintaining that sort of schedule, and as we kind of transition to talking about um 
the way you kind of raised raised your daughter, the fact that she is, you know, getting up when she needs to, she's going through these workouts and, and you know, she's staying disciplined, she's staying organized, she's staying on the schedule that she is. I'm curious about how she has been able to kind of maintain her love and her, and her passion uh, for the game with the level of dedication that she has without uh, be becoming burned out or, or tired and fatigued. So I, I was curious about how you kind of nurtured her or, or, or kind of raised her in that sense to kind of keep that excitement, keep that love for basketball, even when, you know, the, the days get really long and, and, and the journey becomes a bit of a grind. Absolutely. And that's a, that's a very fine line. You know, I've seen, I mean, I have friends that, that uh, their kids were excellent at whatever sport they were playing and, sure. and could have went on and, and played at the next level easy. And they chose not to because they did get burned out. You know what I mean? Whether mm -hmm. it was, whether it was, had anything to do with their parents or it didn't. Um, I've seen, I've seen both. They just got, they just got burned out, put in all the time and, and they missed out on some some things in life. A lot of kids get to do, and um, then I've seen the parents burn them out. And I've kind of I've kind of watched that and tried to learn from that. And you know, um, but you know, I tell my daughter, I was like, if you wanna if you wanna be good at something, there's got to be there's, there's going to be sacrifices in your life. There's there's nobody gets um, to the top without making some serious sacrifices there might be times where your friends are going to go out and and go do something and and you know you you've got to work out or you've you're working out with a trainer or you're doing whatever you've already made that commitment and you're doing that and you're going to miss out on that so i said that's just that's 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 just the way it goes you know we'll, we'll see here and watch these girls in college play basketball or the pros and i'm like i said those girls right there has, has made some serious sacrifices in their life to get where they're at, you know? And, yeah. and I said, that's just, that's, you know, you got to decide if that's what you want in your life. You know, I don't, I don't force anything on her. I encourage her. And, and uh, but she, you know, me and her mom, we both have our own businesses and she sees sacrifices that we make mm -hmm. within our business to make them successful. And what we have to do to get her to her AU tournaments or get her to the high school games or get her to the trainers or whatever, you know. So she's very mature and, and she sees that and 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 she wants to be successful in, in, in basketball. And and when you're when you work hard and you get good and you get the accolades and you get the attention and, and you go out there and compete and win, you know, that's that's um, that's contagious, you know. Um, that's like, uh, it's, a, it's a lot more fun playing a sport when you're good at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I 100% agree with you that. It's, it's a lot easier to, uh, you know, keep your passion and excitement level up when you, when you see all the hard work, you know, kind of paying off and you're doing well and you're getting recognized for the things you do. No, no that's for sure. And just sort of um, kind of taking a step back a little bit, I, I know one of the big you know the hot button issues I feel like for uh, a lot of people in, in the coaching world specifically with youth youth sports is the uh, amount of pressure um, some sometimes in a, at a really young age that, that that players are kind of put on when they're just starting to play the game and, and, and parents are getting you know they're, they're really really trying to get them a head start or they're really putting them in a lot of hours even when they're you know six seven eight years old and I know there's a lot of concern about you know how, how young is is um, you know almost like too young to be you know working them really hard and are, are, they, are they still like having fun or are they even enjoying it when they're at a really young age and, and playing and, and so when you think about your, your, your coaching journey with, with your daughter, um, was, was that ever anything that, that, that you were worried about in terms of making sure that your daughter enjoyed, whether it was softball that she was playing or basketball, or were you pretty confident that your own love for basketball was going to translate and you'd be able to kind of pass that down to her? Yeah, I mean, you know, she, she saw how much I loved it and, 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 I, and I coached both of her teams and her friends and and you know whether it was whether it's now or it was in third grade you know my my objective hasn't changed i wanted to win mm -hmm. very competitive 
and I really didn't coach them much different than I did in third grade. And I do now, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I was, I was tough on them. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, those, those kids always knew, especially my daughter knew that I loved them. You know, you gotta, you gotta have a, a fine balance there where, you know, you've got to, you've got to be strict and, and you've, you've got to make them pay attention. And, and so they'll learn, and, but you, you, you've got to love them, let them know that, Hey, you want to lose that game. You, it's, it's okay. You know, we go on to the next one and, and see what happens, but uh, you know, my daughter, you know, my daughter, if anybody had asked my daughter, how, how was, how's it like playing for your dad? And, and she says, you know, she'll say he, he's tough. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's not all been, been roses. You know, we, we came home and, and, and uh, both of us walk in the door, the door slams and my wife's like, Oh boy, that this is over. This is it. You know, Oh no. <laughs> we sleep on it. The next day I get home, she's ready to go again. You know what I mean? Short, short memory, <laughs> short memory. No, you no, you're absolutely right. And, and as, and, and as you've described yourself, um, you know, that, that you're, uh, you know, you like, you like to win, you'll be tough on her, you know, you, you want what's best for her and everything. And as you mentioned, sometimes that leads to some, some tough nights or some nights where, you know, th things are, uh, you know, people are a little stressed out for one way or the other. For you, as you um, had to start to kind of transition and she was, was getting coached by, by other coaches and, and you weren't uh, maybe as directly involved with her coaching as, as other coaches got involved with her and, and were working with her and implementing her in game plans and whatnot. Right. What, what was that like for you as you had to kind of almost take a step back and, and, and watch others coach her? How do you almost balance that? You know, you're a coach and, and, and you see things on the court and, and you're like, oh man, I, we should be doing this, this or whatever versus letting her coach, you know, have to coach his, his or her team and, and, and give the kind of almost like give away your daughter to that individual. It's, it's really tough. It's really tough. And I had, I had to learn to deal with that. You know, that was not something I was used to. And, you know, as a coach, I didn't want to have to deal with any parents, you know, <laughs> trying to tell me how exactly. to coach or, or, or what to do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had to, I had to put myself in, in their shoes and think, okay, I've got to, I've got to watch it here. If I see something that that's, I think is totally wrong. I just got to deal with it or, somehow you know maybe talk about this in a um, non-subliminal way and say hey you know this is, I, I think this might work you know <laughs> yeah yeah worded a certain way <laughs> yeah yeah but but you know I, I, I'm lucky because she has a great AAU coach she has a great high school coach so you know and I knew that going in um so when they're when they're being coached by good coaches, it's a lot easier to sit there and and um, and watch it and and deal with things and either you know even if it's a loss or whatever. Um, now, if it was a bad coach, then that'd be a whole different story. You know, I'd, I'd just be tough. And you know, when I say a a bad coach, you know, there's a lot of coaches out there that are good people, real good people. Sure, but they're just not they're not that good at coaching. And I mean, they're out there. They're out there at all levels, middle school, high school, <laughs> college, pros, uh -huh. they're all out there. So, you know, um, I'm just fortunate to, that my daughter has, has two good coaches. And, and But, you know, I just, I sit there and, and, and watch. And, you know, when we get home, we'll watch game film and we'll go over it. And I'm like, you know, this is, this is, I see this, you're doing, this is great. This isn't, this is not so great. And I said, what does your coach think about that? And uh, he says the same thing. You know, I said, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah I'd be on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, the, the, the funny thing is everybody, you know, they can, they can sit there and, and they, Hey, hey coaches, your blood pressure going up here. And I said, no, nah, I'm good. You know, everybody mm -hmm. kind of makes fun of me. They know how competitive I am. And <laughs> yeah. So, but no, it's, it's, it, it, when you got good coaches coaching your daughter, it's, it's, it's kind of nice to sit back, you know? It's kind of nice to sit back and just watch. Breathe a little easier. Um, yeah, <laughs> abso absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and and because I, I know we have listeners who, who have um, 
young daughters or young sons and they're going to be facing the uh the challenge and i do believe it is a challenge of, of finding you know a good aau coach and you mentioned that 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 you 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 had one what what, what was the process in 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 getting finding a good good aau coach what was the what was the journey of of, of making sure that she had the right uh, aau coach for well you know she plays for West Virginia Thunder, and, and West Virginia Thunder is a top-notch organization. Yeah. Um, you know, they're they're top ten in the country, and um, well, that'll help. <laughs> we, um, you know, we had a meeting with with the uh, with the coach of the Thunder, and, and we sent him film of the daughter of my daughter, and, and you know, he's like, it looks like she'd be a great fit. We'd like to have her. Blah blah blah. blah. I asked him a few questions, and. Um, you know, asked around, um, and he had a good reputation. Um, so, you know, we thought, well, we'll give us a try. And I think she's going on her, on her third year and it's, it's been good. It's been great. You know, he wants to win. You know, he, he looks out for my daughter. He helps my daughter and, and I couldn't ask for anything more out of a coach. You know, he's, he's teaching her the right things and he wants the best for her. So it, it's, it's worked out great, but you know, it, as a parent and your and your daughter or your son's getting ready to go play AU, if 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 you get put with a bad team, it's that's on you. You know, you gotta do your research and mm -hmm. and and make sure you make the right choice and and to put them on the on the on the right team for your daughter. You know, there's 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 all types of coaches out there. There's a coach that, that yells a lot and there's a coach that's calm. And both of them can be successful. You can be successful coaching coach, coaching either way. Um, I'm an in betweener. You know, I, I yell some. I'm I'm calm some. Mm -hmm. um, but you can win. You can win with with you know both personalities. So you know you're you might have a daughter or a son that you know the yelling that might not be the most effective way to coach them and if you know that then you might want to stick them on a team with a coach that you know uh, has a little bit different personality is a little bit more calm you know so yeah i tell all the parents out there you know it's 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 up to you to do that you you can't put them on a team and then think you know i, I know kids that jump from this team to this team to this team and there's never a coach that's that satisfies the parents you know yeah. So yeah. your kids got your kids got to be coachable, though. You know, your kids got to be coachable. Do you recall any of the questions that that you did ask her, her AAU coach um, when they first started, or, or <laughs> what what things you you wanted to make sure that you felt comfortable with before uh, she joined that team? Oh gosh, it's three years ago, I, I can't remember, but I'm sure one of the questions is, "Do you like to win?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it, you know, if you're winning. If you're winning basketball games or whatever sport it is, if you're winning, then you're probably you probably know what you're doing and you're probably doing things right. Um, uh, you know, you've always heard the the saying, um, you never hear anything from the parents as long as you're winning, right? You know, and <laughs> That's um, true. and I, I was probably that was probably uh, one of my questions and. Um, Oh, I, I I can't even remember. It's been three three years ago, and I, I can't recall what I've asked, what I asked him. But um, whatever I did ask him, it was the he answered with the right with the with the right answers. So she's on the team and doing well, and and they're having success as a team, and things are going good. And and I'm I'm really glad to hear that that that's really that's really great. And as you mentioned, I think one of the things that that probably really benefited that is like you mentioned, like you did your research and you know you kind of looked into it and made and made sure it didn't go into into that blind. So kind of ties right back into the whole idea of being organized, right, and, and making sure that you had things mapped out and ready to go so that that you're making an informed decision even before you had met with them. Yes, abs absolutely. And you know, on a, on an AEU team, um, you know. Most of these coaches are they're doing it and, and not getting paid anything or, or not reaping any benefits other than the benefit of, of working with these girls and getting them to the next level to play. And uh, I commend those coaches for doing that because they could be spending their time doing something else with their family. You know, mm -hmm. our coach, he doesn't even have a daughter on the team. So uh, he could be doing a lot 
lot, lot of different things. Um, but he chose to, to work with these girls and try to get them to the, to the next so parent. You need to, you need to help that coach out and, and do different things and, and help organize, organize, you know, things with the team and make it a little bit easier for them. But, you know, with AAU, I mean, we play, it's West Virginia Thunder, but we play with kids from Kentucky, Ohio, Virginia. Sure. Um, and we've met some, some great people, lot, lifelong friends. And, and that's, that's what it's all about. It's really good. Because it'll be interesting someday when these kids go to college and I can sit here and turn on my TV and watch all those kids <laughs> at different colleges playing ball at the next level, you know? Yeah, no, that, that'll be awesome. And with AAU, and, and as you've alluded to, uh, a big goal, it seems like, for, for especially the program that she's in, but, but obviously for, for your daughter as well, is, is, is to be playing at the next level and, and getting, that, getting those offers and, get, and getting that opportunity. And so I'm curious, in, in AAU events or in showcase events, are, is there anything that you um, talk to her about in particular, if it's a, you know, any, any like big event or big tournament so that you know, anything in particular get, you know, she gets noticed for, or do you just kind of tell her to play within herself and play her game? Well, what, what are those conversations like when those, you know, bigger AAU events come around that she's playing? Well, with? yeah. And here's the conversation. I said, listen, you know, and, and, and she's a great shooter. Um, I said, every time I'm like, you don't, you know, there's, there's all these college coaches, you know, Gino, all of them, are, you know, these kids get nervous, you know, and, and I would too, but I said, here, here's the deal. Don't go out there and worry about scoring 30 points. If you score 30, that's great. If you don't, that's fine. Go out there and hustle, play defense, do all the fun fundamentals. That, and I mean, they don't require a skill set, you know? Mm -hmm. um, go out there and, and get after it and be a, be a team player, be a leader, and, and do all the – do all the things that that no matter what other things should be standard every game every game mm -hmm. and that's defense and that's hustle and, and that's leadership and that's character and all of that so that's you know body body language you know coaches sure. coaches coaches uh <coughs> i've talked to college coaches and and they said they've they went and scouted a, a girl and was a heck of a basketball player. But when she'd go on the bench, she'd go two seats down and pay attention to the game. Yeah. But once we saw that, she crossed off the list, you know, because yeah. they want character. They want, a, they want a team player. They want character. And they look for, they look for those little things. Hmm. Yeah, so, so you learn you, you yeah, learn through the years what these college coaches. You know, my daughter's on a Zoom call every Wednesday with a different college coach, getting that insight. And I listen in. It's it's very interesting to hear what these college coaches look for in a player. And I and I I've, I've listened to about fifteen of those Zoom calls, and I haven't heard one coach say, you know, we're looking for a kid that can score forty points a game. I hadn't heard that. Mm. hadn't heard that at all it's 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 that character you know are you are you paying attention during a timeout to the coach are you make eye contact with him do you you know do you have good body language out there when they call a foul on you and even though you didn't foul how do you react to that you know are you yelling at the referees or you you know what are you doing so there, there's so many things that that college coaches you know, are, are, are looking for. That's, it's very interesting. I wish, I wish a lot of these kids <laughs> could, could hear this, you know? Yeah. yeah well, th that makes me think then, you know, as, as, as a parent and when you, if you're consistently raising, you know, your, your son or daughter to, to have a certain um, standard that they hold themselves to of character and the way that they conduct themselves and just all of those intangible things. And they're always used Absolutely. to doing it. And if they've been doing it their whole time, yeah then it won't bother them when somebody comes to watch them because they know that a lot of the intangible things that that coach is looking for, they do them without even thinking about it. And hopefully yes. that may take some anxiety off of them a little bit. That that's correct. 
that that's exactly right. Couldn't have said it any better. That, if, if you go out and that's just your norm and you don't think, oh, gosh, I got to make sure I have good body language. You know, if you just have good body language, <laughs> if that's just if that's, you know, you go out and, and that's just what you do, then, yeah, you've got it. You've nailed it, you know. And I bet in turn you'll you'll play better because you're probably and, more relaxed and, and playing within yourself. Yes, absolutely. But it's funny, you know, me and me and my daughter will sit down and watch a college basketball game, you know, and and um, you know she'll sit here and and you know we we have seven or eight players that we watch in college that we really watch, you know, and they're good and, and we respect them and we watch them. And my daughter's like. Gosh, she's like, that, that girl, her body language is bad, isn't it? I was like, it is, Sophie, that is. <laughs> That's good that you noticed that, you know? And I said that you want to be opposite of that. Trust me, you want to be opposite of that, you mm -hmm. know? And, and she pays attention. She knows what I'm, I know what I'm talking about. And, and uh, yeah, she's a hustler and, and she does all those intangibles. So it's, that's, that's nice, you know, and all that, all that starts at the dinner table, you know, sure. all that starts at the dinner table. If you're, if you're sitting at that dinner table and you're, and you're talking bad about a teammate or you're talking bad about your coach then that's that's going that's going to transfer over, and that and that kid's going to have a bad attitude, you know, with that kid or or that coach because it starts at the dinner table. They hear that at the dinner table, so they think that's okay, you know. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. And and so as as kind of just putting a bow on that, if if you're just consistently having all those intangible traits, or just teaching, you know, your son or daughter to have good character, then it's not even something that they got to worry about, or something that they got to think about, and and only uh, improves they're standing in, in, a, in a coach or a scout's eyes. So that's, that's kind of reassuring, I think a little bit. So uh, yeah, that's, that's, really, that's really good. Um, you, since you had the experience of, of, of coaching um, a team that your daughter played on, I did want to make sure I, I asked about that. Cause I know that, um, you know, that's something I'm sure some listeners are, are, are curious about, especially those who have sons or daughters that might be playing for them about in a general sense, how you went about, coaching a team and and making sure that you were doing what was best for the team while also you know having your your daughter on the team as well and and being mindful of her her own development how were you able to kind of try to balance that dynamic well you know in practice in practice you know you, you, she does what everybody else does and 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 you know you critique her just like you would anybody else but you know, as in, okay, I need to help my daughter get better here. That that was after practice. You know, mm -hmm. anybody want to stay after practice, we'd stay after and, and get some shots up. Or, you know, there was times where after a game, my daughter, you know, missed some free throws, and and I was like, you know, you've got to, you, you got to be able to make those free throws. So I said, well, after the game, go down the locker room come back up here and we're going to shoot 500 free throws, you know, <laughs> and, and, and did she want to do that? No, but we, we sat there and we shot 500 free throws. So the next game we played, well, she made her free throws. So that was proof that, you know, you put the work in, it's, it's, it's going to happen. Uh, things are going to get better for you. But uh, no, when at the, at the beginning of the year, you know, I'd have a coaches meeting and, you know, I'm one of these coaches. I don't care if you know in middle school. If you're sixth grade, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, and if you're a sixth grade or eighth grader, uh, I, I didn't care. You know, I was going to start the five best players, and and, and uh, you know, I'd, I'd have a I'd have a parents meeting, and I'd explain to them that you know, here's the deal: I want to win. And you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna play the the best players, and if we get up, we'll get playing time. But I said, if it comes, things gonna win that game. And um, I said, you know, your kid your kid will get better during season, but you just need to know that in all seasons, when your kid is supposed to get better, if they don't pick up a basketball till the next season, then they're not gonna get better. You know, so. Mm -hmm. I think over the years, coaching a lot of these girls, 
then it was a small town. Everybody knew me. <laughs> they knew who I was. And, um, you know, um, I said, you know, I'm going, I'm going to love your daughter. I'm going to do the, the best I can with your daughter to teach her how to play basketball. And, um, but I said, you know, uh, I play to win. <clears throat> and, you know, I, I play the, the players that, that I think is going to win that game. So I said, if you've got a problem with that, you know, don't sign these papers that I have for you. Just throw them in the trash on your way out, you know. <laughs> and, I, and I never had a parent do it. Um, you know, I, I tell them, of course, you know, these parents have known me my whole life. I said, I, I will not treat your daughter any different than I do my daughter. And my, the reaction I got is from the parents is like, that's what we're afraid of. <laughs> so <laughs> they see how hard you are on your daughter. <laughs> yeah. So in, in all the years coaching, I never had a parent, ever had a parent, you know, have a complaint, have a problem, make a scene. I was fortunate in softball and basketball. I was fortunate to uh, go all that time and, and never, never have a problem. Um, and, and I had a parent come up to me at the end of one season and, and their, their kid didn't play that much, you know, um, good kid, not the best skill set. And that's, that's okay. Sure. And, but, you know, she, she had a good time and, and she learned a lot. And, and that parent come up to me at the, at the banquet at the end of the season and, and, and said, listen, Hey, uh, my kid absolutely loved it. I thank you for, you know, for working with her and teaching her. And, and the kid got less playing time than anybody. So that I felt pretty good that that parent felt that way, you know. Well, I, I, I know that, and my, most coaches, I'm sure, sure know this, how important it is to have, you know, that parent meeting and make sure that, that you know the parents and talk to the parents. And I feel that it's probably that much more important when you do have your child on the team, because I feel like that, if there, that conversation hasn't taken place and those parents don't know you or they don't know you as a coach or you as a person, I feel and then things could, could really get out of hand if you don't have that, that meeting right at the beginning, especially when, when they know that, you know, your, your, your child is playing for you. That's right. That's right. And I, Trust me, I've seen I've seen <laughs> bad situations with other <laughs> with other kids, with other coaches. I've, everybody has seen it. Um, but you just you just got to have some common sense and and go out there. And I, I coached them hard, but when they come off the floor, I'd, I'd hug them and tell them I loved them, and and, and they all knew that. And, and we, we, you know, it wasn't all you know, bust your butt every minute and. I mean, we did that when we had to do it. Then we had fun the rest of the time. And, you know, they're, they're kids. So they, you got to make it fun. You got to have some fun, you know. Um, but, you know, we won. We won a bunch of championships. And like I said earlier, when, when you're doing that, you, <laughs> there's not much criticism, you uh, know. Yeah. I mean, parent, parents will be happy when that's the situation, right? Yeah. The, the only time I had a parent say something to me is is, is you know, uh, in three years, we only lost three games, so um, we didn't. It wasn't uh, now those those three games we lost. The only family that gave me a hard time was my own family. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, but I, I had that I, had, works. <laughs> I had a parent. Uh, I had a parent come down to me after one game, and it's like, "Hey, we want to talk to you." And I'm thinking, "Oh gosh, did I did I yell to your daughter? What happened?" I'm like, "Okay." I said, "What's the problem?" They're like. You need to be easier on your kid. You're too hard on your own kid. <laughs> but I was like, ah, okay, thanks for the advice. I appreciate it. <laughs> that's funny. No, that, that's great. <laughs> I, 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 that, that, is, that is something that I would, would, be, would completely throw me, throw me off if a parent was, was coming up to me or something like that. That's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the game was over. We shook hands. And here come his parents across the floor. And I'm like, oh, no. What's <laughs> going on? And, yeah. and, and and it was a it was a lady, and she put her arm around me. She's like, "Hey, you need to take it easy on your daughter. You're too hard on her." <laughs> I said, "Yes, ma'am." Uh, under advisement. No, advisement. That's, that's funny. Um, but I, you know, you know, <laughs> I, I expected a lot of my daughter. Um, she was one of the captains, and and you know, she knew that she needed to be a leader. And, and when I didn't see her doing that, I'd I'd let her know that she wasn't doing that. Um, but you know. 
I didn't coach her any different than, than anybody else on the team during practices, but you know, there was things that she needed to get better at and we would, we would take care of that after practice. Thanks. Uh, moving on to kind of a more general uh, topic, and, and I don't want to put the put the pressure on you to speak for 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 all all parents out there. But but since since you're in the stands and, and you see uh, a lot of things that are that 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 are going on uh, in that sense, what what do you see in terms of uh, parent behavior uh, uh, during games in in your area? Do you, do you find that parents mostly respectful, or are, are there are there issues during during games? And what what do you kind of see? Because I know coaches, uh, they all have their kind of different opinions about the way parents are acting or the way that they act in the stands. So I'm curious about what it's like for you uh, in, in your vantage point. Yeah, you know, you you've always got those parents that the referee never makes the right call. <laughs> uh, no, I've been there a few times too. I've done, I've done that, but, um, you know, the, those people that, you know, is going to be doing that. I kind of, I kind of sit away from, uh, <laughs> you know, they're, they're passionate. They want to win. I understand that. Um, but I, what, even when I was coaching, I didn't get the referees a hard time. You know, that's, those referees aren't going to win or lose you a game. You know what I mean? If they make a bad call at the end of the game, yeah, people think, oh, that was the referee's fault. It's not. It's never the referee's fault. But, you know, you 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 have some parents that always feel like their kid, you know, needs more playing time um, uh, or, or, you know, their kid got taken out of the game for it wasn't their fault or, you know, you're going to have that. I mean, you're going to have that. That that was happening a hundred years ago, and it's going to be <laughs> happening a hundred years from now. That's yeah, just the way yeah. it is. Now, you got you have coaches out there that I've seen that the freshman is better than the senior, but he's going to play that senior just because they're a senior. You know, parents get upset at that, and I don't blame them. You know, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd be upset at that. So you got to make your decision. Am I going to let my kid? play for this coach when everybody in those stands see that that freshman is better than that senior. So yep. that's frustrating. And, and that gets, that gets parents upset and, and, you know, it's, it's hard not to blame them, you know? Um, then, then you have the coach that, um, that just, you know, like I said, he's a, he's a nice guy, but, if he wins, that's fine. If he loses, that's fine, you know, and, <laughs> and parents get upset at that, you know, and, and I would too, you know, but again, and, and, and it's not like, it's not like, I mean, you know, some parents, they'll, they'll, they'll move to another school and they'll do something different. Um, but there's a lot of parents that don't have those resources to do that. And they're just stuck, you know, yeah. And that's that's the bad part because not every coach is a good coach. Yeah, and it's just it, it, it's just there's just not a good coach. And your kid only has four years of high school, and those are supposed to be some of the best days of your life. And if you're unfortunate enough to get a bad coach, then that's just that's a shame, you know. Um, but when you got a good coach making the right decisions, doing the right thing, playing the best kid. Um, it's a lot easier to set up, set up in a stance and, and not have a quarrel, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's to kind of take things a little bit easier and just kind of take it in and, and, and not have to worry, worry about, worry about those sort of things. And, um, right. So I don't from, you know, the games that, that, that I watch, it's, it's not that bad. I mean, you got, you got your fans that are passionate and want to win and, and, sure. They're they're hollering and they're you know getting excited and and that's just that's just that's that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. And I think uh, something that's that's a little maybe a different perspective from you too is though that is that because you're so familiar with the game and you played it and you coached it that there's probably things that you notice um, that maybe well definitely like other parents aren't aren't aware of. So oh, I'm, I'm oh, sure absolutely. that affects your perspective of what you know. <laughs> parents might be complaining about or talking about and you see it completely differently because you know the yeah. game. And I tell you what, by being able to see it differently and understand it more than the average parent, you know, I'll hear a parent, I'm like, listen, here's the deal. And I'll explain it to them. I'm like, you know, 
that's not why that happened. This is why this happened. You know, and they're like, oh, okay. So, so, you know, it, it calms them down a little bit. So, you know, I've, I've really never, I've really never um, told our coach that, hey, I, by me being a coach, uh, uh, I'm helping you with these parents up here explaining some things that you do that they might understand. I need to tell him that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's, uh, that, that's funny. It's almost like a double-edged sword, I feel like, sometimes for us coaches. It's like, wow, it's great that we have, you know, parents in the stands who coach the game and know the game, and that's helpful. Then at the same time, it's like, uh-oh, we have a bunch of parents who know the game well, too. So <laughs> that, that, that can be a little scary, too. I've seen some parents, and I'm sure you have, too, up in the, up in the stands that, that, that uh, oh, they're the, they're the best coach. They're the best <laughs> me, They're the best ever. Everything you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nothing's nothing's going to make them happy, <laughs> mm -hmm. and that's just the, that's just the way it is. Like I said, that was like that when I played, and it's going to be like that a hundred years from now. Yeah, no, that's that, that's funny. Um, you know, but the, I tell you, I tell you one thing. You know, with yeah. with with, and even when I was a coach, I told you I, I was never hard on the referees. You know, I'd give them a little jabber here and there, but. I let them know I appreciate them coming out and refereeing these games because I tell you what, you know, you keep you keep degrading these these refs and getting on them and stuff. You know, these referees not going to do it. Then then you'll have a problem getting referees, and then there's a lot of bad things that can happen. So, so I, I respect I respect those guys. They're not going to make the right calls every time. It's just not going to happen. You just got to deal with that. They're not doing it on purpose, but you know, one of these days it might be a, a a shortage of referees because they just don't want to deal with that. The money's not that good and they don't want to deal with it, you know. Well, I, I get the emails from NFHS, I feel like, every couple weeks about ref shortages and recruiting refs and asking if we can find a ref. So, no, I, sure. they're hurting. Oh, they're hurting, a all right. Absolutely. When I go to these AAU games, you know, I'm making a point to, after the games go over, I'll see them out in the parking lot. And I'm like, hey, I appreciate you. You're, you you Breathing these games for these girls, you know, and they're, you know, there's like, it kind of, they kind of look at me like, what? <laughs> Someone's saying something nice to me, you know? It's probably, but, probably but they, throwing them off. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they need to hear that. And, you know, because without them, we couldn't have all these games. We couldn't do this. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's, and that's a, that's a, that's a thankless job, you know? These guys yeah. getting paid, you know, 40, 50 bucks or something. And, and boy, they're taking a lot of crap from the, from the fans. And 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 you know, I I feel like, and I don't know how you feel, but I feel like the ones who are uh, sometimes talking the most about that, they're they're not the ones jumping up to volunteer to to be a ref themselves. No, <laughs> no, you wouldn't catch them out there. No way. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so that that helps a little bit too. I feel like sometimes to be be aware of like, oh well, you know, there is a shortage. I kind of joke with some people like, hey, I know you don't like referees. Well, I mean, there is a shortage of them, so I'm sure they'd appreciate it if you want to become one. But I don't Absolutely. think anyone's taking me up on that. Funny, right, enough. right. <laughs> and if, if I if I hear a parent, you know, giving them a hard time or something, I, I tell them, I said, listen, give them give them a break. You know, be thankful that they come out to do this, and you know, mm -hmm. and these parents know I used to be a coach and, and I still coach these girls now in the off season and they kind of respect that and you know they calm down a little bit so I haven't seen anything since my girls been in high school I haven't seen anything bad at all just yeah. your normal stuff just your normal stuff awesome uh before we hit our concluding segment I did want to I did want to ask from a training perspective when it comes to working with your daughter on, on her own skill development and, and training with her uh, what yeah. were some what were some things that that whether it's now or whether it's when we're younger what what do you think were beneficial um, drills or skills or things that, that that you worked on with her that that you thought were essential to her development as a player? Well, you know, I, I think everything revolves around hand eye coordination. You know, you got to have hand, you got to have good hand eye coordination, and we worked on since she was little. We worked on different things. Uh, you know, my daughter's. 5'11", big wingspan. So at an early age, she was she was kind of awkward with that, you know. She's like that newborn baby gazelle <laughs> running around, you know, legs and arms going everywhere. So, you know, we had to get that coordination in. And, and um, but, you know, doing, I always said practice doesn't make perfect. It's perfect practice makes perfect. 
Um, mm. If you go out there, you can go out there and practice four hours a day. But if you're doing things wrong, <laughs> then that four uh-huh. hours was, was bad four hours, you know? Sure. So you got to you got to go do things the right way consistency you know doing things the same every time you know you don't do it right for two days then go do it wrong for one day then go back and do it right for two days you know Mm -hmm. you got to do things right every day um and and just work on work on that consistency you know don't try to don't try you know when you're a fourth grader you're only going to be so strong so you know your shot is going to look different as a fourth grader as it is an eighth grader or if you're a junior in high school. So, you know, as you get stronger, then that's got to change. You can't keep shooting the ball the same as when you shot in fourth grade. When you get to eighth grade, you're still shooting it the same. You know, that's got to, that's got to change. And then you've got to, you've got to, you got to go with that, you know, um, and then be consistent with the new way you're shooting. It's constantly changing, you know. I see these freshmen and seniors. And I look back when they're freshmen. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know. <laughs> and at the time, I thought they were good, and they were good. But I look back at film. I'm like, gosh, that was an awful looking shot, you know. Because <laughs> when they're senior, it was so pretty because they're stronger. But yeah. as a freshman, they made that shot work, you know. As a senior, they're stronger, and, and now they're shooting it correct, and they're making that work. But um, yeah, always. I always wanted to work on hand-eye coordination uh, with my daughter and, uh, you know, practicing the right way, you know, try to go game speed, try to do drills that, that you're going to do in a game. You know, you can do all this fancy stuff. But you're not going to do that in a game. So, right. so that's, that's, to me, that's, that's wasteful time. So do things that's, that you're going to do in a game, game, game speed and, and game time drills, you know, that, that you can, that you're actually going to use. So, and, and, and the main thing is just, just be consistent, you know, don't go a week, work out hard and skip a week and then work out maybe three days the next week, get on a schedule and, and be consistent. It's going to work out for you. And as somebody who, who played at a, uh, at a high level, and as you mentioned, you had the opportunity to, to, to play collegiately. Were, were there things that, that you carried over from your own development as a player that, that, you, that you made sure that she, she worked on as well? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I, I, look, I look at her now, we'll watch film, and I'm like, man, the girl, you know, I was a shooter. But I'm looking, <laughs> I'm looking at my daughter, not my son, my daughter. And I'm looking, I'm like, I tell my wife, I'm like, man, she she can shoot better than I did, and I could shoot, <laughs> but but this girl, she can she can really shoot it, you know. Um, yeah, there were there were and 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 the things that, and it wasn't so much offense as it was, you know, defense and just boxing out, and you know, I was like, yeah, you got you scored twenty four points, but I said let's you know. And I'm tough. I'm, like I said, I'm tough. You know, I'm going to give the compliments, but I'm, I'm going to critique her for the things that she did wrong, you know? And I'm like, sure. you know, I try to, I preach to her all the time. I said, don't, don't ever watch the game, play the game. I, that's what I played the game. I never watched. I want the ball every time. When someone's shot went up, I was in there. I was trying to get that ball. I want that ball in my hands as much as possible. And I see, I see kids and I see my daughter sometimes, you know, she's on, on opposite of the ball side and she's on weak side and, and the ball goes up and, and she turns around and watches to see if they make it. And then her girl that she was guarding goes around and gets the rebound and puts it back up, <laughs> you know? And I was like, that, that's what I call watching the game, <laughs> you know, play the game, play the game. Every minute you're out there, be playing the game, be moving them and play it. So that's, that's probably the biggest thing I've had to work with or with is, is don't ever watch, get in there, get in there and play, be boxing out, doing whatever, every play. No, no, I like that. And since stay engaged, you know, stay, stay always in it, you know, like that. you don't want to be playing. I, I've, I've told some of the players I've coached, like, it's, it's like we're playing four on five of the way you just sort of sitting there or standing yeah. there waiting for something to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It's not going to come to you. You got to go get it, you know? Yeah. No, so. So she's gotten a lot better at that. And, you know, when she was out there, then, then, then at the end of the day, I'd tell her about it. 
And she's, you know, she didn't recall that. But when you sit down and watch film, mm. <laughs> the film don't, film doesn't lie. Sure. Yeah, you know, no, she's like, absolutely. She's like, oh, I see what you're talking about. She's like, yeah. She's like, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. I was, I was, I saw that ball go up and she's like, I'm thinking, all right, hurry up and get out and fast break. And yeah, I see, I see the girl Osgard, she went around me, got to put it back up for the, for two points. I said, absolutely. Yep. Uh, play the play, play it in, until the whistle blows or someone has the ball. Then you, then you go, you know. I, I feel related to that, that it seems like it's a really healthy conversation for, for coaches who have um, a kid who plays basketball to, to really take that time to actually watch film after, you know, the, the, the game or the situations happen, as opposed to um, just having a conversation after the game. Cause I feel like sometimes those can get a little stressful and those can get a little little tough and if you don't have the film to back it up there might not be a lot of learning or teaching or happening going on I, I feel like those conversations and you can speak to it when you have film in front of you and maybe there's been some time to separate from the game itself to when you watch film probably are much more productive and there's probably a lot better conversation and teaching going on well yeah and and you know I'm 50 years old so there wasn't there wasn't film back when I played mm -hmm. you know what I mean there oh, just yeah. wasn't mm -hmm. you know so these kids are so fortunate now to be able to, to sit back and, and, and watch film or even watch, you know, a lot of these, a lot of our games are, are live streamed with a, a professional company that comes in. And I mean, it's, it's, it's like watching ESPN. I mean, it's <laughs> nice, you know? Yeah. So um, what an advantage to be able to sit back and, and watch that film um and that's what kids and that's what kids i don't feel like they do that enough you know they don't watch film or or some of these kids don't even watch basketball they play it they play it and they're pretty good and you ask them you're like hey what what team do you like to watch or what what girl do you like we're like she's like eh, i really don't watch basketball <laughs> i'm like what yeah, no i you don't no, watch? I, it's common yeah that 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 was my trainer back in the day i'd watch basketball and I would see somebody and, and I'd like their moves and I'd go out there in the driveway or the gym and I would do it and do it and do it till I got that move down. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's what I, that was my trainer was these college basketball games, pro basketball games, you know? So yeah. I, I feel like, I feel like these kids don't, don't take advantage of that and, and watch basketball. Cause to me, that's what develops your basketball IQ, you know? Well, you just see the game. Well, to me, I think the one of the, one of the really really cool ways uh, to just watching basketball in general is just see it played at a, such a different level in some aspects when you watch it collegiately or even even professionally, and just see what it looks like at at such a different level it gives you something to aspire to or something to kind of work towards, which I always thought was really cool. Well, right, and you know, we'll we'll watch it, and and I, I, I'll tell my daughter, I'm like, no, watch number four. Watch, watch how she plays help side defense and still knows where her girl's at. You know, watch, watch her body move. Watch how she fights around that screen or, or whatever, you know. And it's just, it, it, you know, and, and I'm glad my daughter wants to watch it. You know, I was, I'm like, uh, you know, uh, Iowa. We love watching Iowa and Caitlin Clark, you know. And, and, and my daughter's, I mean, she loves watching these games. So that, that's yeah. kind of nice. You know? We can sit here and have fun, eat some popcorn, watch the watch the games and, and take it in. And there's no pressure on either one of us doing that. It's kind of nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're not, you're not, you're just, just get to watch somebody else do it and you don't have to stop yeah. and, and then have to uh, be like, hey, what were you doing here on this, on this or whatever? It's like, oh, that's not me playing. <laughs> so it's okay. Right. And, and going back to your question, you know, do you watch game film? Do you give it a couple of days and watch? And that, that all depends on, if it was a loss or a win, if it was a win, my daughter did good. She's like, dad, let's go home and watch that game film. Let's go home and watch that. You know, uh -huh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> now if it's a loss, she's like, yeah, we'll watch that in a couple of days. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's funny. I, yeah. I get that though. You know, I, I'm, I was what was most excited. Like, yeah, I'll watch film after a win. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> right. Especially, especially if you did good. Right. You know, or if I thought I did good, and then sometimes, right. oh, wait a minute, uh-oh. 
<laughs> right. You thought you did good. Like, and you watch the game for him. Like, oh, wait a second. I didn't uh, uh oh, right I was, let's turn it off. Turn it off. I'll watch it later. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Joke that. No, it's about the team that won, though. So it's okay. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Um, exactly. That's, that's great. Uh, to wrap up, coach, there's a couple of questions I ask every guest. So I'll go ahead and start with this first one here. Uh, thinking okay. back on whether you want to do a coaching moment, professional moment, a, a parenting moment, any one of those is fine. But what is a moment of yours that you think reflecting on that others listening would be able to learn from? Oh, man, that's a good question. That's a good question. Um. Yeah, well, I tell you what, you know, in three years, I lost three games, okay? So, and, and I'd rather cut a finger off than lose. That's how serious I am about com competition and winning. But those three games, those three games that I lost taught me more than all those games that I won. You know, you, you take something out of a loss. You, you got to learn, you got to learn to be, that you're going to lose games every once in a while, you know, and I, and I never wanted to, I never wanted to think of that, but, you know, you, you got to be a, it's easy to be a good winner, but you got to be able to be a good loser. So, um, you know, I never, I never wanted to, um, when we lost a game to, to, to make my kids feel like they were losers and, and that they were awful and, and I was totally the opposite. I said, girls, this is, it feels bad, doesn't it? And they, they agree. I was like, this is, you know, it's no fun to lose, is it? And they're like, no. I'm like, but here's the deal. You're not always going to win through life. You're just not. There's going to be things in life that knocks you down. And it's going to be a lot worse than, than what we experienced tonight by losing this basketball game. So get over it you know, work on the things that that's going to make you better to, to not lose and to win these games. And, and, but I said, you know, you go, you shake their hands and tell them good job because, because they just beat you. So, you know, I had to, I had to learn to lose and had to teach my kids how to learn to lose. And, and I think that's very important because if, because if you're not, if you can't do that, then you're going to struggle in life. Yeah. And, and I, I, I think the, uh, the point that you made about how there's going to be more difficult challenges that, that come your way than, than just a basketball game. So being able to yeah. handle that and deal with right. that is, is, is something you just kind of have to learn how to manage to do. But like you said, it's, 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 it's no fun taking that loss, but uh, yeah. The, the most, I, the I, most, I, the most successful people in this world have lost at things, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 And I know I, I agree with you. I've, I've, I've told my girls before that, uh, you know, I, I hate losing more than I like winning. So, so I, I, I'm with you there. <laughs> um, yep. To wrap up, Coach, I give every guest what I call like my 60-second soapbox, but I, I don't time you. It's just the title of it. It's a platform for you to get out your kind of final message, a closing thought, just sort of a final idea that you want to leave the listeners with, and you can kind of take it any direction that you wish to. But I, I want you to kind of have the, the floor here for this last little bit, and uh, I'm going to kind of let you take it from here. Sure. Yeah. For, for all those basketball dads or for all those basketball moms mm -hmm. that, that coach their kids or have coached their kids. Um, and, and if they're still coaching now, or if they're not coaching, you know, just, just remember that, you know, these, these middle school, these high school years, trust me, they don't last long. So, so soak it up enjoy the moment don't don't get too don't get too wrapped up in in your kid being um you know basketball player of the year or whatever just enjoy them make sure they know that you love them and um, just enjoy the ride because you're, you're not gonna get that back you know yeah, I uh, could, couldn't word that any better myself. And, and I'm sure, as, as, as I think we talked about, when you kind of look back on it now, I'm sure you're already thinking, like, where'd the time go? <laughs> and it's already, yes. it's already flying I, by quickly. Yes, it is. I, I agree. Well, uh, Coach, I appreciate you spending some time talking about your, your, your coaching experience, uh, your, your daughter, about coaching your daughter, uh, 
parents, parenting, AAU. We kind of touched on a whole bunch of different topics. So yes. uh, I just want to thank you for, for spending some time and, and, and best of luck to you. Best of luck to your daughter and best of luck uh, for you maintaining uh, your, your schedule and all the organization, all the, all the time management that, that you have going on as well. I'm, I admire that also. So thank you so much, coach. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for spending yeah, some time. Th yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And, and thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. And thank you guys so much for listening. This was another edition of the Basketball Teacher Podcast. We will see you guys next time. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Basketball Teacher Podcast. Make sure to connect with us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, or reach us directly through email at basketballteacherpodcast at gmail.com. Take care, be safe, and we'll see you next time.